Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video has been voted in by my Patreon members. Hey, guys, thanks a million. These are my personal stories from my time shooting under the major oak at Sherwood Forest. Some of the stories I have from that time, but there's one that sticks in my mind. I'm just climbing over the fence to go towards the major oak when a young lad, number 11 bus, not running down, Oi, mister, he says to me. And I looked at him, I says, yeah, what do you want, son? Who are you supposed to be? And I said, Robin Hood. You can't be Robin Hood. You're too old. Well, my hair had changed colour. So I looked at him, I said, do you know what, son? You're right. Can you keep a secret? What's that then? I ain't Robin Hood. Didn't think you was. Who are you then? I'm Robin Hood's granddad. Wow, he says. That's fantastic. And off he went, made up, waiting for Robin Hood's granddad to appear and shoot under the major oak, Sherwood Forest, England. So people would always ask me about Robin Hood. And they'd ask my own personal opinion. And I'd read the guest, you know, the poem of Robin Hood. I'd read all of the outlaw stories. And the conclusion I come to is Robin Hood could be one of many different characters. But my favourite candidate for Robin Hood is Robin of Loxley near Stratford-upon-Avon. He is documented, never called Robin Hood, Robin of Loxley. And strangely, his grave, which is in Loxley Churchyard, resembles the drawings of Robin Hood's grave, which was supposed to be up in Yorkshire. And there's a bit of a story around it. However, I've been researching and I found another candidate. And it's a bit of a, ooh, Robert the Bruce. In his exile was down in Yorkshire. His family down in Yorkshire have an awful lot of connections. One of them, if you translate the modern English, translates to Gisborne. Could it be that Robin Hood was Robin the Bruce? Could it be that that great Scottish king, a hero of mine, was actually Robin Hood? Because one statement, and I love this because this is putting the cat amongst the pigeons. As one Scotsman says to me, Hey, Robin Hood, Scottish. But as a Yorkshireman says to me, Ah, Robert the Bruce, a true Yorkshireman indeed. The legend of Robin Hood. It lives on. You know, the rangers at Sherwood Forest used to tell me that the uh, major oak there was anything from 1,000 to 1,200 years old and I worked that out so if Robin Hood really existed which I of course believe he did then that tree would have been a nice mature tree I was told that it takes 300 years to grow an oak 300 years to mature and around 300 years to die while the major oak has been supported propped up so it isn't dying but I remember going there first time with my dad a five six year old little lad and in those days, the tree wasn't surrounded by a fence to keep people out. And we went right up to the tree and he put me inside the tree. And he says, this is where Robin Hood would hide when the sheriff's men were looking for him. Oh, the legend. As you can appreciate, shooting a longbow, a war bow with pointed arrows. These have got medieval points on them. It's very dangerous. And the people at Sherwood, some of them just didn't get it that the arrows can kill, for sure. And I was shooting in the early years that I was there, shooting away, doing a speed shoot, and I was averaging 18 to 20 arrows in a minute, over about 35 yards. And some good accuracy, I was enjoying it. And then the one day a little child just ran. And the little girl, three maybe, three and a half, ran straight in front of the arrows, just as one had thudded into the target. And I didn't see her until I raised my bow and half drew my next arrow. The parents hadn't noticed that the child was missing. They were so engrossed in what I was doing. So I stopped shooting and I asked, does anybody know who that sweet little girl is who's standing right next to my target? The audience laughed. But then when I looked and saw the parents, they weren't laughing. They were horrified. So that was lesson number one. So what I used to do at the beginning of every shoot from that day was, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shoot. But in the past, we've had children break free with excitement 
and run towards the target as I'm shooting. So please, keep hold of your children. Now the rest of you, especially those who don't have any children with you, if you see a child running towards the target, can you please, please call out the height of the child and the direction of the wind so I can stop him getting towards the target? It used to bring their house down, but it had the message, these arrows will kill you. And I was shooting there the one day at a very, very small target. In fact, it was a feather on top of a post. So I am so focused on knocking this feather. And the audience were enthralled because the feather was going dink, dink as I was knocking it. And then finally the feather just up into the air and I stopped shooting. I turned to the audience and I went, wow. But the audience weren't looking at me. They were looking at the people who'd appeared from behind my archery stop net. They had walked through a no entry zone of the forest all the way to the back of my target to see where all of the arrows were coming from. Ironically, some of the arrows had gone straight through the net and had gone past the people as they walked towards the back of the target. People sometimes just do not understand how dangerous my job could be. Sometimes at Sherwood, on bank holidays, the public holidays we have in England, you would have an entire medieval village set up. Traders, singers, dancers, and you get to know these people. I mean, Jim and Emma from Trinity Court Pottery. Still got the cup. Still got the costrel. And prize possession, not on film, I still have my puzzle jug. You had Colin, who ran his own have-a-go archery. The atmosphere was brilliant and we had this community going. So I'd be shooting across the park, they'd be jousting, the carpenters would be working away, the singers and dancers. It really was quite atmospheric, quite lovely. And I remember getting ready to shoot the one day on, building the audience up. And I reached for my hunting horn, war horn. This is actually a real cow horn. This was a lovely cow. I knew her name. She was called 4802. And I just give it one blast. And as I did that, somebody answered my call from right across the forest, a reenactor, then another horn, then another horn, all the way through Sherwood Forest. The horns were sounding. And then I simply sounded back. The audience were absolutely in awe. They were just loving the whole atmosphere of the forest. They had been immersed in the tales of Robin Hood, medieval England. Well, I'll tell you, it was hard work. I would sometimes shoot, let's figure this out, 50, 100, anything up to four to 500 arrows in a day. And sometimes my fingers ached, my shoulders definitely ached. But I'd built up the muscles over the years. But what I liked to do was to go and sit behind the major oak and I used to sit there eat my sandwiches there was even a smaller one next to me because my son Josh used to come to Sherwood Forest and he would sit and eat his sandwiches he'd even shoot with me but this one day I'm on my own I've relished the idea of having my lovely sandwiches but all around my feet is powder and I thought oh it must be some fertilizer or some weed killer or something like that and I just ignored it. And there was quite a lot of it. What I didn't realise, I was also sat in it. So there I am, munching away. And I took out a nice doorstop sandwich. And I'm about to take a big bite when a kind of a mini whirlwind came around and blew all of the dust in the air just as I was taking a nice big bite. And I took two bites. Crunch, crunch. And I've got a mouthful of this powder. So I had a drink of water and carried on eating once the wind had stopped. At the end of the day, I always used to get help to take down my target and my archery stop net. It was the rangers from Sherwood, the guys and the girls. And they were always brilliant, so helpful to me and so good to the public. Never forgotten those people. Yeah, guys, if you're still around, thanks a million. But this one particular day, I've asked them, I says, why is there all of that fertilizer around the oak? And they said, what do you mean, Kevin? I says, around the base of the oak over there, where I sit, there's lots of powder. And they both smiled at each other. And they says, come on, let's go and have a look, Kevin. So I walked over with the two rangers. 
who are giggling at each other. So they says, oh, you've been sat there. Yeah, we can see your bum print in the dust. And I says, what is it? Why did you put it down? Oh, we don't put it down, Kevin. I says, what do you mean? He says, that isn't fertilizer. Those are human ashes. People who've had granddad or whoever cremated and their last wishes is to have their ashes spread around the major oak at Sherwood Forest. This is what they do. They come over night time and they do it in secret and granddad's ashes are spread around. There's never been a problem till Kevin the Bowman came along and sat in granddad and then ate a little bit of him. So for a short while, I had the insider nickname of Kevin the Cannibal. You know, there was an incident at Sherwood when I was shooting away and the film, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, Kevin Costner. Hey, what a guy, what a film. You can put it apart if you like. You can say, well, Robin Hood didn't have an American accent. I don't care. The film, brilliant. Kevin Costner, excellent. Uh, but it's just one little thing. I always used to get the people at Sherwood. Can you shoot two arrows at once? And I'd say to them, yeah, you can. I says, but in the film, you'll notice that Robin Hood pulls these fletchings, the feathers off with his teeth. Well, let me tell you, these are bound, whipped, we call it, and they are glued. You'll be there for about half an hour chewing away, nom, 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 by which time you'd be skewered. However, you don't need to take a fletching off. You just put two arrows on the bow and shoot. So the audience would go, go on then. So I'd put two arrows on the bow and I'd shoot. Full draw I can do pretty much. Two arrows would go in the target, 35 yards, no problems. Uh, sometimes if I hadn't drawn the arrow far enough, one arrow would drop low. But always you got the same comment. Can you do three? Bet you can't do three. Can you do four? But I explained to them the one day, why shoot two arrows? Let's time it. And I always had somebody, often it was a lady called Kim, she would time for me. And how long it took to put two arrows on the bow and then shoot two arrows separately, then put three arrows on the bow. And people are amazed at just how fast you could shoot. And of course, when I used to do the speed shoot there, it was regularly 18 arrows in a minute into the target. And then I started to get fed up of having the target. So it would be a post and I'd put something on top of the post, a broken arrow or something, and I would shoot at that. And boy, did that bring on my accuracy. And to turn round after 21 arrows, I've actually hit, skimmed, or just missed that post. Boy, did I feel good. And the audience were blown away. You don't need two arrows. If you've got two men coming towards you, shoot them both as quick as you can. If not, be ready with your sword. Well, I hope you enjoy that little video of mine of my time at Sherwood Forest. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel further, you could always join our Patreon community. The link is in the description. Now, before I go, a quick shout out to some of my Patreon members. I've got to read these out so I don't get the names wrong. We have Stephanie Walker, Tom Smith and Aditya Anand. I hope I pronounced that right. Hey guys, thanks a million. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do these films. Thanks.